thank you, God, that we can come, Lord God, and abide in the midst of where you are as a people, Lord, because, God, of your goodness towards us. We're here standing today, God, because of your goodness, God. We could recount so many times in our lives where there could have been circumstances that could have thrown us in another direction. But, God, you have been faithful. God, you have been good. And so we open up our hearts today as we come before you say thank you Abba thank you Father for your goodness for your graciousness for your kindness towards us Lord God we thank you God for those with us God in the sanctuary those God that are out Lord God in the midst God of the different states at various circumstances and appointments God we thank you God for those on their way we thank you God for those in the nations that are joining us online and God we thank you God that even as we come together that there would be a divine synergy and your kingdom would come God that liberty he would come to our hearts that freedom would reign in the midst of us and that you would do Lord exceedingly and above all that we can ask or expect and so we say come in the midst of us Lord have your way Lord we again pray for Miami Gardens we pray for South Florida we thank you God for your hand upon this region and we just want to stand today to declare your blessings upon this land God we know in the midst of all that is transpiring Lord the struggle Lord God the economic circumstances father the cultural circumstances the moral circumstances we know God that you are greater and God you have a plan for this land and so father we speak your goodness we speak your blessing God upon those who would stand in positions Lord to govern God we speak your wisdom we speak your grace God from the president Lord to every leader and governor that you have established even in the midst of this space father we thank you for your blessing Lord and your leadership and your conviction reigning upon their hearts that they would lead according to righteousness justice and truth and so father we just speak God your blessing Lord, over the families, God, over the houses and homes that surround us here in this community, over the families, God, that are a part of us here in the ministries, and even those, God, that we may not know, Lord, we thank you, God, for your goodness being extended to them, for your power, Lord, being extended to them, Lord, for your hand of breakthrough and deliverance and salvation being extended to them, Lord, we thank you that, Lord, where there are those struggling in their bodies, Lord, needing a touch from you, Lord, we speak speak healing to their bodies right now in the name of Jesus Lord your word says that by your stripes we are healed and so father we thank you amen for the healing anointing going out God to homes and hearts God that they might have an encounter with you that they might be drawn closer to you that they might come to know you in a personal way as you reveal yourself to them and so we say be exalted God and in every nation God that joins us even our mission God that are out there in the field Lord we lift up the favuzas in Argentina Lord we lift up Pastor Samuel in India God we lift up Pastor Lafleur in Haiti and Father we thank you God for your blessing upon their work in the nations of the earth Lord we speak God your provision being met to them we speak God your power being made evident in the midst of their ministry that hearts and souls would be drawn to you and that lives would be transformed form discovering their purpose and walking in the identity that you have for them and so father we thank you for your blessing God upon those God in the nations Lord God upon our missionaries and even here as we would worship you today God with those that are in the house with those that are joining us online on the live with those coming in on the replay father we thank you for your power and your majesty being revealed to them God we thank you for drawing them closer to yourself Lord God and for Lord your transformation and power touching their lives and their families God father you know their concerns you know every worry you know every thought you know the things God that they're dealing with Lord the battles that they're struggling with and so father we thank you we thank you that your hand is not sharp that you cannot deliver but even now you are touching healing restoring and reviving and we bless you in jesus name and as we worship you today 
Again, we bless you and we thank you, God, for all that you have planned for us. We thank you, God, that in your presence there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Can somebody say fullness of joy? Fullness of I don't joy. know about you, but I am glad to be in the house of God with you. Amen. I am glad to be in the house of God with you because there's joy in his house. And there's joy when we come together as a people. And so, Father, I just thank you for your joy. Oh, for your joy. Come on. This is the day the Lord has made. This is the day to rejoice and be glad. And so, Lord, we thank you for your joy. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. For your goodness. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just keep standing together as we worship the King of glory. We sing, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Because of who you are, Lord God, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Oh, because of who you are, because of who you are, I give you praise. You're worthy of all my praise, oh God. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are, Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Your Lord, your Master, your Savior, because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Oh, Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. You are Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, you are my provider, my provider, yes, you are my God. Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign, Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah Shalom, you are the prince, my prince of peace, and I worship you. Of who you are, because of who you are, I give my lips, my hands, my voice is made to worship you because of who you are, I give you praise. You have been a faithful God, oh, because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who. Jehovah, D.C., 
Because of who you are, I give you praise. I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are, Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are, oh Lord, I worship you. Lord, I worship you, I worship God. With my hands I worship, with my mouth I worship, with my heart I worship you. I will lift your name, I will praise your name, Lord, I worship you. I will seek your face, I will live. song, the challenge to us is to think about who he is to us. Who has he been to us? Is he our faithful father? Is he our dearest friend? Is he, one, he the one that opens our eyes in the morning? Is he the one that keeps our very lives? Is he the one that secured us from the pit of hell? Is he the one that surrounds us? Is he the one that causes us to overcome and causes us to win? Hallelujah. Is he the one who took our sin and took our shame and bore it on the cross? Is he the holy one? Is he the mighty one? Is he the prince of our peace? Has he won our hearts today? Because if he's won our hearts, we're gonna worship him. We're gonna, we're gonna give him everything that we are. We're gonna give him everything that we have here in this moment. And even as we go from here later, we're going to think, Lord, how can I love on you? How can I serve you? How can I please you? How can my life honor you? Because you have won. You've won my heart. You've won me over. You've wooed me to yourself. There's no one like you. There's no one like you. There's no one like you. You have won my lovely all together different you have won my heart heaven and earth sing today holy one holy, holy one you have won you have won
Jesus, you are fairer than the sons of men. Jesus, you are. Jesus, you are fairer, lovelier than, you're lovelier than the sons of men. The sons of men, Jesus, Jesus, you are fairer. Oh, you're better than, you're better than, you're better than the sons of men. about him but as we stand here thinking of the one who said he would lay his life down for us greater love has no man than this that he would lay his life down for his friend I don't know I might lay down my life for this one I might think a little bit about another one but Jesus his mission his aim his goal was to redeem us to himself, to take us out of the mess that we found ourselves in and to bring him back, bring us back to himself. And when I think of that, <laughs> I have never seen another more beautiful, never seen another more lovely, never seen another more righteous, never seen another more holy. I have never seen another more. I've never seen another more lovely. Never seen another more righteous. Never seen another more holy. I will never see another more beautiful. I'll never see another more lovely. I'll never see another more righteous. I'll Jesus, you are fairer, my friend. You're fairer than the sons 
presence, God, you would continue to open up our eyes to the beauty of who you are. David said in Psalms 27, one thing I desire of the Lord and that I will search after, to behold his beauty, to behold his beauty and to inquire in his temple. God, here we are gathered together, Lord, inquiring, searching after seeking you lord god with all of our hearts god our eyes are set upon you our desire is set upon you god we ask even in this place that you would open up our eyes god that you would touch our hearts lord that you would breathe a fresh wind over us god god as the fire comes alive in the presence of oxygen God would you breathe a fresh wind over our hearts Lord would you ignite a passion on the inside come on why don't you just put your hand on your heart right now doesn't matter what hand you use but just put your hand on your heart right now Lord we say give us a passion for Jesus God breathe upon our hearts Lord, you know where the fire is waning. God, you know where the embers are struggling. You know us, Lord, better than we know ourselves. So we say, Holy Spirit, Holy God, will you breathe a fresh wind? Even as we come to behold you, God, we want to be caught up, Lord, like John on the Isle of Patmos in the book of Revelation. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard a voice saying, come up here. I have much to show you, John. Lord, we thank you, God, that you, the God who caught up John, who opened his eyes to behold your beauty, God, you can come. And in the same way, even as we're here today on the Lord's day, you can open our eyes. You can ignite our hearts again. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we thank you for the fire that burns away the distractions, that burns away the lesser loves, that burns away, God, every opponent that would come against us seeking after you. You know, one thing the enemy loves to do, he loves to come into the midst of our lives he loves to create circumstances to use them 
to cause us to worry, to cause us to be in fear, to cause us to take our eyes off of Jesus. But the Lord says today, set your eyes upon me. Don't be afraid, for I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power. Somebody say, God, I thank you for your power. His power comes when you feel the inability of your own strength to make things happen. His power comes in the midst of your situation to turn it all around. Can somebody say, thank you, God, for your power? He says, not only will I give you power, but I will pour upon you my love. When you feel alone, when you feel isolated, when you feel rejected, when you feel like nobody's in your corner, when you feel like nobody's on your side, his love, his arms comes around you. He says in Isaiah 49, can a woman forget her child and have not compassion on the child of her womb? He says, surely she may forget, but I will not forget you. I want you to know today that he has not forgotten you, that you're not alone, that his love is with you. Can somebody say, thank you, God, for your love? Then last of all, not only does he say, I've not given you the spirit of fear, but the power of love, but he says, I've also given you a sound mind. When the spirit of confusion comes into your life, when you can't understand what is happening all around you, the Lord comes and he gives you the peace that passes all understanding. It means you can't quite figure it out. You can't quite work it out. But the peace of God passes understanding. Hallelujah. It comes upon you and it keeps you with a sound mind. Paul said, I know what it is to abound, which means for things to work out for me. He also says, I know what it is to be abased, which means things didn't quite work out the way I expected. But he said, whether I am abounding or whether I am abased, I am content. That's the peace of God. And I speak that peace over us right now. Those here in the sanctuary, those online with us, I speak the peace of God that passes all understanding can somebody say today thank you God for a sound mind a sound mind I don't know about you but there have been things in my life that could have took me out of my right mind but it was his peace amen it was his peace amen come on look at someone and tell them it was his peace hallelujah so father we thank you today and we bless you for all that you have done already in our midst and all that you have assigned yet to happen. God, we give you the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. Amen. The presence of God. And again, we want to bless God, hallelujah, for his goodness in bringing us here today. Amen. I know the weather is a bit hot (laughs) and the AC is struggling, amen, to make things happen. But we are here to praise God and to worship him, amen, and to have fellowship with each other, to have that place of communion and love with each other, amen. And so we give God thanks nevertheless because he is good and his mercy endures forever. How many of you have seen God's mercy just this week in your life? You see God, a man, come through for you again when you least expect it. How many of you, you're still holding on, you're believing, a man, for him to do the exceeding, the abundant, and above? I don't know about you, but I fall in both categories, amen? I have seen his mercy, and I'm still there believing and expectant, a man, of all that he has promised. So praise God, a man. Again, welcome to Awake the Flame Ministries, where it is our heart. To see a passion for Jesus awoken on the inside of yours. To see your heart turn towards him. One of the things God told us even as we set out to start this work. He said, I want to send you to those who are bruised and broken. He said out of Isaiah 42, 3 and 4. The prophet Isaiah said, God will send his anointed one. 
and the bruised reed he will not allow to break. And those who have a flickering flame in their heart, he will not allow it to go out before he brings forth justice on their behalf. You know what that means? He's not going to quit on you. Amen? Amen. Somebody say he's not going to quit on me. It's not going to quit on you. Praise God. He is for you and not against you. Amen? Amen. Praise God. You guys can come on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As you come, come and have a seat. It's good to have you with us. All right, all right. Praise God. Amen. But he's good and he loves us. And we want to share again some love with you guys as well who are here. Yeah, you can spread on out. <laughs> Everybody tends to like the left side, right? You come on in and everybody goes to the left side. But the, the, the right side is okay. It's right for y'all. It's right for y'all, all right? But it's, it's right over here for me. But it's all right. Let's spread out. And it's good to see, you know, again, these lovely families here with us today. And again, we just thank God for your heart and for your life. Amen. And we want to pray and bless you even as we welcome you. Good to see you, buddy. All right, and we just want to ask you to just stand, those who are here with us for the first time. Praise God. Just stand. We're just going to pray for you, nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> we just want to pray for you. Amen. Extend our hands to you. Come on in and have a seat, guys. Praise God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. Come on. Oh, praise God. So let's, let's extend some love to them Amen. as they're here with us today. Good to see you, Chief. All right. So we're just going to pray for you guys, okay? That's okay with you? We're just going to pray for you, all right? We're getting a lot of the love. So, yeah, let's get in those hugs. We, we are a hug in type of people, but yeah. But let me just pray for you this moment, all right? Stand with me quickly. Stand with me quickly. Father, I just want to thank you, God, for all of these hearts, God, that you brought in our midst today. Father, we thank you that, Lord, you are, Lord, drawing people in such a time as this in the midst of all the crises in the world in the midst of all that is happening god we know that god you are soon returning and you're drawing your people to yourself so lord i thank you for every heart in this room lord i thank you god for their destinies i thank you that you have a purpose and a calling for each and every one of them lord i thank you god that your plans towards them are good plans god your word says it is plans to prosper them and not to harm them and and so, Father, we thank you for your prosperity and your goodness towards your people that in the midst of their valleys and in the midst of their mountaintops, in the midst of the good times, in the midst of their bad times, they will know that you are ever present with them, God, to see them through. So we bless them. And by extension, God, as they stand here today, we bless their households. We bless God their jobs. We bless God the work of their hands. And we declare your favor over their lives. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. I also want to say you may be seated. If there is anyone in the room today, you're in the midst of, I know we have, uh, again, some younger folk, amen, and I want to say that all of you are, are good, youthful folk, you know, but they're, they're youthful folk and they're younger folk, amen? <laughs> and if you are in, uh, anybody, you're in your high school age range right now, anybody in high school, high school age range, okay, high school, all right, all right, I want you, this is just me being obedient to God, again, as I was there praying for you, I heard the Lord just speak to my heart. You know, I was praying for all of you, but I heard the Lord speak to my heart. And he said, for you that are in high school, I'm not sure what particular grade you're at, but he says he's opening unusual doors of favor that will go beyond your expectation. When I say favor, what I am speaking of is avenues of scholarship. I don't know what your plans are, what your vision is for your future. God knows that, right? And you're thinking about that right now. But I want you to know the word of God says that before he formed you in your mother's womb, he knew you. Amen. Which means he knows everything about you. He knows your next steps. And that's what I heard as I was praying for you guys. Those in high school, he is opening up doors again, of unusual favor of scholarship. And he says, again, don't underestimate yourself. You know, because sometimes you might have a dream and you might say, well, you know what? I don't know if I can afford that. I don't know if that will work out for me. He says, don't underestimate yourselves. Amen. I want to share a story with you. We were at a conference just this week. I went to school and, you know, you're going to guess my age. 
um, at, at college uh, from 2002. Some of you might not have even been born in 2002. But 2002 to 2005, I went to college, uh, a Bible college in Santa Rosa Beach, uh, Florida. That's in the panhandle, okay? Just right under Alabama, really close up there uh, for three years. And uh, again, as we were there this week, because there was a conference, we sat with some friends um, that live in Orlando. They were up there with us. How many folk love Orlando? Or you love to go to Orlando? At least for Disney World. At least for Universal. All right. <laughs> you love Orlando. It's a cool place. But we were there uh, uh, with them. And we were just sitting down having lunch. And he was sharing uh, his story. Um, a young guy just like me. I'm just going to say I'm young. All right. Young guy just like me. And he was there just sharing his story with his family. And he was saying, listen, you know, we... Uh, uh, just came back from a missions trip uh, in Guyana where, you know, we served there uh, for about 30 days. Spent almost like a whole month over there in Guyana. That's, again, uh, just at the top there of South America. Uh, uh, Consider the Caribbean island still, but connected to South America. But we served there for 30 year, uh, days, not years, uh, 30 days, again, doing some work there. And he said, you know, one of the decisions we had to make uh, um, was to invest some funds to make it happen, right? Because that's a long trip, 30 days over there. That's a long trip. And so they had to make some investments and funds. And they wanted to do some other stuff. They wanted to, you know, do some stuff with their house and stuff like that because they're still paying their mortgage. But the Lord said, you know what? Again, believe me, make this investment and go in this direction and serve the nation of Guyana. And they went over there. And you know what happened when they came back? Now, this part blew my mind. I'm there sitting down and I'm just listening in. All right. And this part blew my mind. When they came came back okay he said somebody just called him an anonymous person just called him and said I just want to ask you a question how much is your mortgage and he's like I don't know you I'm not going to be telling you how much I owe for my house this is just weird why what am I gonna and so he says you know just to be kind he just throws out a figure out there he's like well a little over a hundred thousand yeah it wasn't really that, but he was just, you know, uh, I don't want to tell nobody my business. But the guy said, for real, how much do you owe on your house? I'm serious about this. And he said, well, to be honest with you, it's just close to over just $210,000. Pretty much a lot of money, right? You know what the guy said? The guy said, I want you to know that, you know, I know about, you know, where you went, you know, your trip. I've heard about some decisions you made. And I want you to know that the God, God spoke to me and told me to pay off your entire mortgage. Hello. Hello. I think you can clap for that. I was like, whoa. <laughs> That's amazing. But I'm sharing that with you to help you to see that God is still in the job of amazing. And sometimes we can, you know, limit in our minds. I don't know about you, but sometimes, you know, it gets hard for me to believe for some big things like that. But nothing is impossible with God. So I want you to know that. I want to encourage you with that, that nothing is impossible with God. So you guys believe he's going to open, what did he say? Unusual doors of favor and scholarship for you. Praise God. All right. Just want to get that out of the way and bless you real good. But that really blessed me, that testimony. Well, again. I want to welcome you, and I want to share uh, just some announcements with you concerning uh, what we're doing at this time. We have coming up on the 31st, and I know the 31st, again, already ringing in your ears. My wife is bringing me the announcement. She wants to make sure I get everything right. Praise God. Thank God for women keeping us in alignment. Amen? Guys, say amen. Come on. All right? But I want to share something uh, uh, just first in that. Uh, we are having what we're calling a harvest house party, okay? And it's going to be on the 31st. That is, I know you know, again, we're usually in the culture Halloween is celebrated. But what we are doing, we are having a party by our house. Again, where we want to invite you guys. We want to have a whole bunch of eats. We're going to have a whole bunch of games. We're going to have a, a little dessert cook-off competition with prizes. We're going to have barbecue in the back. It's going to be fun, all right? And you're going to have loads of gifts and, kid, and, 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 and good fun. We're going to have a kid section and stuff like that. No, not over here by our house. All right. And, you know, we are over in Pembroke Pines. Okay. So, you know, it's going to be by our home. We're going to fit everybody in. It's going to be fun. Now, I know some of you might say, but where's everybody else? Well, we have some folk um, in Tennessee right now. I was telling, uh, again, uh, those who came a bit earlier that we have some folk over there. We have, uh, again, one of our families as well in Bahamas. Okay. But... 
we're going to have everybody over and we're going to have some eats and treats. You know, it's a potluck style event, but our guests, since you are a guest, you don't have to potluck. All right. All right. <laughs> you can just show up. All right. No potluck, but show up. All right. Potluck means you bring a meal. So you don't have to do that. You can just show up. But again, we'll have um, some details on it on our social media. And if you ever want to find us on social media, it's Instagram, again, uh, .com slash awake dot the dot flame. And on the Facebook, it's Facebook slash awake the flame. YouTube, YouTube uh, slash awake the flame. All right. Pretty simple. YouTube, it gets a little dicey, but everything else, not YouTube, uh, Instagram with those dots, but everything else is pretty much Awake the Flame. And so we have other information out uh, there for you. And if you fill in the visitor cards that you've received, again, we will also email you our newsletter, okay, and show you the event information so that you can come and hang out with us and be a part of what's happening on that day. Also, let me open back up my wife's phone if I can. All right. We are having, oh, celebrations. And, and, and that day, Tuesday the 31st, we're going to be celebrating all of the October birthdays. We had so much October birthdays and anniversaries and, and just coming out of September. But we have Sabrina. Uh, she's right now in Tennessee right now on the 24th of October. So, Sabrina, we celebrate you. Everybody say happy birthday, Sabrina. We love you. And we know your birthday is on the 24th, but we're having a big shebang on the 31st. So, again, we're looking forward for you to be there. And then her husband, Chris, it's also in October. Christopher is the coolest guy. Listen, let me tell you. Some of you guys, you know, listen to rap and hip-hop and stuff like that. And you think you know rappers and hip-hoppers. This guy, listen, he was way back in the day with Grandmaster Flash. Some of you don't even know Grandmaster Flash, but that's okay. All right? That's okay. But he's good. He's good, and he's multi-talented. Again, he's one of our, you know, creatives. And he's, he's having his birthday on the 30th, which is the day before the party. All right? So we're excited for them, and we are excited for all of us getting together to celebrate. We have Dr. Heather as well, uh, who we celebrated. We shouted her out for her birthday. But, again, that celebration will all be, uh, again, including her as well. All right? So tons of cake, tons of eats, tons of treats. I hope you guys can make it. Um, this Wednesday, we are going to recommit uh, to starting back our times of prayer. You remember the last two weeks, we've been traveling. We're in L.A., and then we were uh, again in North Florida. Um, but since we're back, we're recommencing our time of prayer. We usually meet at 12 p.m. We meet on Zoom. Don't gather here anywhere else but online. And again, that information is up there bit uh, dot Lee slash ADFM pray and we gather together just for 45 minutes to pray as a church family if you have any prayer requests at all on that same form you can write it in and we'll lift up your prayer requests before the Lord okay we pray for our folk every single week okay it's just last week we had to uh, take a break because we were at conference amen but that's going to start back this Wednesday and then in the evening at six o'clock uh, I come on for our time which is called prayer power and and prophecy, where we pray, pray for healing, uh, where we pray uh, as well, again, for people's destiny and purpose. We speak, you know, what we hear the Lord saying over your life. How many of you know God still speaks today? John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice. All right? My sheep, meaning those who follow him. I know them and they follow me. And so, again, we have that time, 6 to 7 o'clock or about 6.45. Well, we try to finish at 6.45. Sometimes we go into 7. Uh, because, uh, again, we have right after that another session from 7 um, to about 8.30 where it's our Winning in the Word Wednesday session where we have then a Bible study, a systematic Bible study. So if you really want to study the Bible, if you really want to grow, again, in the principle of God's Word, that session is for you so there are different flavors all right at different times throughout wednesday but we encourage you to come out and be a part of it okay guys praise god amen, amen. did i do well one more thing, one more thing. One more thing. <laughs> i gotta check i don't really do the announcements my wife is preaching today so they come oh okay yes we're having 
a rise uh, uh, a conference called the Rise Up Leadership Conference. This is a conference for entrepreneurs, folk again in the marketplace, again those that are interested in growing in their leadership skills, and we're having great voices coming to be a part of that. That's going to be held on February the 23rd to the 24th, again 2024. So that's into next year again. But we're going to start marketing and getting things out. We have a really lovely facility where we're going to be having those meetings. It's going to be amazing. Uh, the Friday night from 7 uh, till 9, we're going to have an open session, which is free for everybody. But the Saturday is a mastermind workshop where you're going to be hearing from brilliant minds all across different aspects of the marketplace. Uh, again, from development companies to business and leadership coaches on the Saturday from 9 till 2. And we'll have lunch provided as well. But in those sessions, again, uh, we'll be having panel discussions. We'll be having mastermind group uh, sessions, depending on... Uh, what, uh, again, is your heartbeat in regards to leadership, okay? And so we're going to share more about that. Again, get connected with our socials. You're going to see more of that information coming. But we have not just, again, awesome, awesome voices from here in South Florida, but we also have voices, again, from North California. Uh, sorry, North California. From North Carolina. Again, I was in California, and I was California dreaming. I'm, I'm still California dreaming, all right? Beautiful state. But uh, again, uh, we're having some voice from North Carolina coming in and as well as from Trinidad and Tobago down in the islands. And so we're going to have an awesome time um, again with a, 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 a variety of voices speaking into a variety of different, as I said, aspects of leadership, things you need to know. Again, we're going to be covering tech as well, AI, and again, utilizing AI in your leadership and in your business, what that looks like. So it's going to be a broad spectrum of topics and we we really do encourage you, again, to prepare, again, for that, okay? And so you're going to hear more about that, as I said, as the week continues. Again, get connected to our social media. But at this time, I want to get out of the way. We'll do that afterwards. Amen. I want to get out of the way. <laughs> We'll give afterwards and, and so forth. But I really want to give my wife the opportunity to come um, and share uh, uh, the word with you. We were traveling and we got back in uh, Friday uh, morning. Um, I want to thank uh, Sister Monica right there in the back. Everybody look back. See Sister Monica back there in that lovely dress. Come on, shake at us again. Sister Monica again came over and helped, you know, take care of our boys while we were away. Okay, not that they, they, they're big men and, you know, they, they were like, you know, well, we big men. We can run the house, but you know what? You know, it's still good <laughs> to have someone there. But uh, again, we thank you, uh, Sister Monica, for all of your help. I just told her we were just away. We you know, have the boys there. She was like, what about the boys? Such and such, and she made herself available. So we really love that. And this is the type of community, uh, again, we love uh, a community uh, that doesn't just uh, just care about, you know, you showing up in a room on Sundays, but are there for you throughout the week. Amen. That's important to me. Amen. That we are a family and we are connected. So praise God. Blessed is she who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. And I want to get out of the way and give her the mic. But even before I do that, let's just pray. Father, I just thank you, God. Amen for this vessel. Lord, I know she has been preparing. She's been putting together, Lord God, your message for the day, God. She has been pressing in, God, even up to about 3 o'clock this morning. She was just still there praying over what you have been brewing on the inside of her heart. And I pray, God, that again you would again, be her articulation, that you would, again, uh, be, Lord, her confidence, and that as the word comes forth, God, it will bless and transform our lives. It will change us and shift us, again, to be better and to be drawn closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you. Now, it's really good to see all of you here. I'm going to give you a chance to stretch your legs. Just stand with me. We are going to read from... Judges 4, just give you a, um, an overview of where we're going to start. My Father, even as I stand before you, Lord God, I thank you that you give insight, Lord, into the desires of your heart for us. I thank you, Lord God, that you um, touch our, so you'll touch my mouth and help me to speak only what you would have me to speak. Open the eyes and the ears of our understanding. Help us to apply it to our lives, Lord God, and may we... Um, receive something that is useful and practical today in Jesus name amen so from Judges chapter 4 it says when Ehud was dead 
the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. Now let me see something here. Because I have some young people in here. Let me see if we can try this from another version. All right. A little bit easier on the ears. The people of Israel kept right on doing evil in God's sight. With Ehud dead, God sold them off to this king called Jabin, who ruled from Hazor. He was the king of Canaan. And Sisera, who lived in Harasha, Hagoya, was the commander of his army. The people of Israel cried out to God because he had cruelly oppressed them with his 900 iron chariots for 20 years. So think, what are those uh, big armor vehicles called in war? What, what are they called? Tanks. Thank you. Tanks. Think 900 tanks oppressing you for 20 years. And Deborah was a prophet, the wife of Lapidus. She was judge over Israel at that time. She held court under Deborah's palm between Ramah and Bethel in the hills of Ephraim. The people of Israel went to her in matters of justice. So she sent for Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, It has become clear that God, the God of Israel, commands you, Go to Mount Tabor and prepare for battle. Take ten companies of soldiers from Naphtali and Zebulun. I'll take care of getting Sisera, the leader of Jabin's army, to the Kishon River with all his chariots and troops, and I'll make sure you win the battle. So not only were they going out to fight, they knew that God was going to help them and give them strategy. And Barak, who's the, not Obama, um, Barak, the general, said, if you go with me, I'll go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. And Deborah said, of course I'll go with you, but understand that with an attitude like that, there's no glory in it for you. God will use a woman's hand to take care of Sisera. That's the other general. So Deborah got ready and went with Barak, and Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali together, and ten companies of men followed him, and Deborah was with him. And it happened that this dude called Heber the Kenite had parted company with the other Kenites, I know it's a lot of names, we're going to get it together, the descendants of Hobab, Moses' in-law. He was now living at another place near Kadesh, and they told Sisera that Barak, son of Abinoam, had gone up to Mount Tabor. Sisera immediately called up all his chariots to the Kishon River, 900 tanks, along with all his troops who were with him. And Deborah said to Barak, charge, as in, you know, go get this guy. This very day, God has given you victory over Sisera. Isn't God marching before you? And Barak charged down the slopes of Mount Tabor, his ten companies following him. God routed Sisera, which means he turned up everything. He broke up everything, destroyed everything, all those chariots, all those troops before Barak. And Sisera jumped out of his chariot like a pleb. What do y'all call that? Like a, like a punk anyway like an npc anyway um <laughs> he ran for his life headed for the tent of jael wife of the same heber the kenite jabin king of hazor and heber the kenite were on good terms with one another and jael stepped out to meet sisera and said come in sir stay here with me don't be afraid so he went with her into her tent she covered him with a blanket and he said to her please a little water i'm thirsty and she opened a bottle of milk, gave him a drink, and then covered him up again. And he then said, stand at the tent flap. If anyone comes by and asks you, is there anyone here, tell him, no, not a soul. In other words, life for me. Then while he was fast asleep from exhaustion, Jael, wife of Heber, took a tent peg and hammer, graphic scenes, tiptoed toward him and drove the tent peg through his temple and all the way into the ground. She was a mercenary. He convulsed and died. Barack, not Obama, arrived in pursuit of Sisera. Jael went out to greet him. She said, come, I'll show you the man you're looking for. And he went with her, and there he was, Sisera, stretched out dead with a tent peg through his temple. And on that day, God subdued Jabin, king of Canaan, before the people of Israel. And the people of Israel pressed harder and harder on Jabin, king of Canaan, until there was nothing left of him, and you may take your seats. Okay? Thank you, Lord. That was a thank you for tarrying with me. Okay, now what I want to start by letting you know is that this is not the first Jabin king that appears in the journey of Joshua and the Israelites. Okay, so that was Judges 4. All the way back in the book before that, in Judges chapter 11, there's a Jabin king of Hazor that the Israelites and Joshua had already wiped out. So he decided that he and a whole set of other kings that they were going to get together and oppose the Israelites. 
And Joshua, because he had the Lord before him and around him and with him, and God had promised him, I'm going to help you to overcome, he got his team together, and in this sneak attack, he basically destroyed everybody, everything. He chased them till there was nothing left of them. He burned their cities and all this stuff. But how do you know, how many of us know that sometimes when you think that you have gotten rid of something, you haven't always gotten rid of it? There's this um, place in my house that you see these, um, these little termite eggs, you know, the little black ones. Anybody know about termites? And they'll, they'll like drill in and they'll make nests, right? And they, they leave these mounds of what looks like dirt, but it's actually eggs, right? And you can sweep all of that termite stuff up and you can throw it out and all that kind of stuff. But I can tell you, if you don't treat those termites, what's going to happen? It's going to come all the way back again. And you can't even see what is happening underneath. You can't see where they are burrowing and eating up all the wood and stuff and, and just, um, just destroying the parts of your house that you need to be strong and to be secure. And in this same way, we saw it's not the same Jabin, because this is a whole 160 years later. It's not the same Jabin. But it is what Jabin represents. Jabin represents, and his name means discerner. His name means wisdom. His name means um, um, like, like thoughtfulness. And the Bible tells us about a type of wisdom that is not of God, but it's of the world. It's not of God, but it's of the earth. It's like... If we consider the ways that we think as people, as individuals, if you think about some YouTube videos that you might watch and people give you hacks and people give you tips and some of these things work and some of them don't work and some of them invite you to do things that aren't really for your benefit just to get a success or just to get a W that isn't really a W that serves you or a win that serves you holistically. It asks you to compromise. It asks you to do things that you don't necessarily feel great about to get you success, okay? But we want to step away from that and we want to deal with the areas in our lives where we are invited to compromise. Um, the, we read in the story about Sisera and how the Israelites and, and came and ousted his whole army, right? Now, Sisera was Jabin's general. Sisera saw everybody getting killed and getting swept away because the Lord stepped in. It says in Judges 5 that the Lord actually sent climatic or, or environmental help. So he sent rain, and he caused the ground to shake. So you imagine all these chariots are going out, and they're expecting dry ground, but what do they get? They get murky, muddy ground, right? Because the Lord sent tons of rain, and he caused the river that they were with, that they were near, to flood. So the chariots couldn't do what they were supposed to do. They weren't giving what they were supposed to give, right? And it caused their enemy to fail. It caused their enemy not to be successful, Okay. Now, the, the, the other army fighting with him or all the people fighting with him or under him, they were all killed out, and Caesar was the only one left. But what did he do? Did he stand up and fight? No, he ran like a little baby into the tent of his, what would be his ally. Okay? Now, the other thing is, how did we even get here? Because in Joshua... Chapter 9, we read about all, I said it before, all that the Israelites had been able to accomplish by the help of the Lord. They were able to fight their armies, the other armies, and gain territory, and they were given land that they didn't have to tend, and they were given vineyards that they didn't have to plant, and all this kind of stuff. So what changed between Jabin number 1 and Jabin number 2? I'm glad you asked. Okay? Now, when we were away, one of the things that happened is that I wanted to make sure that my kids were covered when it came to food. So I ordered some pizzas. And I gave 
precise instructions. I said, this is enough pizza for two days. You can have some today, and you can have the leftovers for dinner tomorrow. And you can have this for breakfast, and you can have this for lunch. And you can have this if you need a snack and all that kind of stuff. I message on day two. I say, hey, how y'all doing? You know, what did you eat for breakfast today? Because I know my children. <laughs> and the answer was pizza. Pizza for breakfast. Pizza for lunch. And I half near lost my mind because I am how many nine hours away. I don't want to have to send more food. And I'm thinking, guys, could you just follow the instructions? Can someone say follow the instructions? Thank you. Thank you, husband. Can somebody else say follow the instructions? Because this is important, okay? And what happened is that Joshua told these people, now Joshua was getting old. He was the leader of, this, of the people. He was getting old. He was about to die. And he basically said, hey, guys, follow the instructions. There are some things that you need to do, and there are some things that you need to stay away from. You need to keep your eyes on the Lord. You need to trust God and serve him and not worship the other things that the other people in the land worship. Now, in that time, that might have been statues and all this kind of stuff. But what are some of the things that we worship? And by worship, I mean, what are some of the things that are more important to us than a relationship with the Lord? So that might be clothes. That might be other friends. That might be money. That might be education. That might be anything that we think is more important or can help us more and that we give more attention to, give more allegiance to. It might be social media. It might be whatever y'all are playing right now because I'm hearing it's not, um, it's not Fortnite anymore, whatever you guys are, the thing with the fruit, whatever. It might be that, okay? But God wants us to put him in first place because when we put him in first place, everything else falls into right position and right place. Okay, but what they didn't do is that. Now, in Joshua 24, that's the end of Joshua before we get into jo to Judges. There was this exchange before between Joshua and the people. And Joshua said, Yo dudes, y'all gonna have to follow these things and keep it tight. And they were like, no, they were like, yeah, got it. No problem. Organize. We, we in it to win it. We, we with you. And Joshua said, but really... You, you, need to, you need to do these things. And they said, got it. And they said that a couple more times. And they made a, you know, they, they wrote it in their book of the law. And they set up a stone and, you know, to commemorate, to commemorate it and everything. And how do you know, how many of you know that when you set up a stone of commemoration or you save something to your Instagram or you whatever and you say, I'm going to remember that. And you don't actually go back and look at it. You're going to forget all about it right? And what happened is Joshua died, and all the people who were his age died, and then there was a whole other generation that came up, and they forgot all about what had been originally done. They forgot all about the exploits. They forgot all about how God parted the sea. They forgot all about how God delivered them and, and took care of them and brought them through and brought them out. They forgot. And what did they choose to do instead? The wrong thing. That's what they chose to do. Okay? So there are a few things that got them into this place. They were complacent. They were complacent. They started allowing their enemies to live. Now, before, the general rule was that if you come into a territory and you want to occupy it, nothing can remain. Now, we don't fight flesh and blood anymore. We fight, as the Bible says, wickedness in high places, strongholds, we pull down strongholds, we fight, we fight spiritual battles, okay? So we're not talking about person-to-person -person fights. I don't know if anybody in here is a battle warrior, but we're not talking person-to-person -person fights. We don't deal on that level, we deal on a higher level, okay? Amen. But they started to allow their enemies to live and to stay. That's not good practice. If you want to maintain a certain standard if you want to keep a certain atmosphere you have to get all this stuff out you and the roaches cannot abide in your house you gotta get them out right you can't say uh well this one's cute 
So I'm going to let this one live, but this big one's ugly, so I'm going to kick it out. I have some neighbors. I won't identify them, but they'll be taking the BB gun to the iguanas. Why? We can't live in the same place. We cannot coexist. We cannot coexist. I can't. I cannot coexist with the iguanas, right? So they started to have all this mixture, and it, it caused them to be like divided in heart and divided in intent. So that led then to making covenants. And making covenants means not just did they allow them to remain, but they said to them, you're allowed certain things. You're allowed to stick around and you're, uh, you know, they made promises to them, to the other people in the land. And then the next thing that happened is that it was a slippery slope and they ended up in places of compromise. So not only are they allowing them to stay, not only are they, they allowing them to do what they want to do, but then they're doing the same things too, right? That they were not supposed to do. So they had one standard of living for their lives. But now they're taking up the other standard of living. Is that when you have a family, a household, right? No, Maurice, you know what stands in your family and what doesn't stand in your family, right? You can go to Isaiah Howard's house and you can see a whole different way of behavior, but you ain't taking it to your share because it just don't fly. That's a Boricua house, right? Okay? So there's a whole different situation, all right? So when you find yourself in a place of compromise, then you, you fall off of the things you've been taught. You fall away from the things that are meant to keep you and to hold you steady. And that brings you into places of cycles. And it said that the more that they compromised, the more and more corrupt they got. The worse and worse they got. And it went from a place where Joshua was leading to there having to be judges. God put these judges in place. And the reason he put these judges in place is because he was sick of hearing them cry out and holler out. Okay? So imagine, you are lactose intolerant. But you love cheese. You love milk. You, you eat macaroni pie, oh my goodness. Or mac, mac and cheese for y'all, right? Mac and cheese. Okay? So you... See the mac and cheese. You think, I can just have a little square. Just a little square. You're so licorice. You're so greedy <laughs> that you take a big square. Okay? Yeah. Corruption. Yeah. Yeah. You get that big square and you eat it for leftovers too. Yeah. Worse and worse. And then calamity comes. Yeah. That poor bathroom toilet. Okay? <laughs> can't manage can't manage and then God sends in the pepto bismol that's the judges right to deliver you right and you have a, a time of concord that's just a, a c word because I was using c's a c word for peace you settle stomach doing okay and so on and then you smell the macaroni again you smell the mac and cheese again and you want it so bad <laughs> Because it's Thanksgiving. And turkey and ham and mac, and mac and cheese. Nothing like it. And you go again. And that's exactly what was happening with them. They were doing the same things over and over again. And then God would feel for them. And help them out with these judges. Which is exactly what happened with Deborah. If you remember what we read at the beginning. Which I'm sure you don't. But we will go over it again. But they were in this place where they were doing the wrong thing. Getting delivered from it getting help from it, and then going back. Now, parents in here, if you have a child and you give them a little leeway, you left your shoes outside, you left your ball at the park, I still can let you play games. And then they come back and do it again. At some point, you have to what? Break the cycle. Okay, we have to break the cycle. All right. Now, the way that they started to break the cycle, and this is going to come into why my title is Win the War Within. I want us to shift our thinking a bit, and thinking is a good word, to think about how the, the war is on the inside of us. 
So we've been talking about the Bible. We've been talking about and drawing comparisons, right? But there's a war, especially for us young people, <laughs> on, the <laughs> on the inside of us that is fighting for our allegiance, fighting for our attention, fighting for our... Um, Fighting, fighting for us to distract us from the purpose that God has for us. And I was glad when uh, Dwayne started by prophesying over the high schoolers. I remember when I was about your age, I was a good student, but I was not a study student. I was a crammer. And God was so faithful to me because I still happened to skid on through. But there came a point when I was applying for scholarships, applying for scholarships, applying for scholarships, applying, 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 and not getting through, not getting through. And, and right before he encouraged you not to discount yourselves, I thought the same thing for you. God is so able to do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond all we can ask or think. God will bring something to you that never existed before and I can tell you this because it happened to me I'm applying for all these known scholarships looking for all these things I wasn't like a sportsman I didn't have that much going you know but then out of the blue I wanted to do I wanted to do tourism management and out of the blue a tourism related entity decided they're gonna offer a scholarship now what in the world wow. British Airways Bless you, British Airways, if you still exist. Um, just, out, just out of the blue, you know? And I was, because I was asking God for his will for my life, and because God loves and has favor on his people, and I happen to be one of them, I was perfectly positioned to step into that blessing. And I am no better than any one of you all. So don't doubt what God can do. Receive the word and believe that God will surprise you, that he'll knock your socks off, okay? Now, the Caesarea, this is the general that was left behind when everybody else got killed out. He ran to the tent of an ally. And I want us to think of the tent as our hearts and as our minds, okay? It's a place that no one can see into. The tents in those days were woven from goat hair, and the goat hair was black like my skirt, right? It's a place of darkness. And he was trying to find solace and refuge in this tent. Now imagine this enemy coming to this tent, right? What are some of the enemies, if you think about it, what are some of the enemies or some of the things that try to find a place to settle in your heart and in your thinking that you can immediately recognize are not good for you? So some of those thoughts might be, I'm too little, I'm too big, I'm too stupid, I'm too white. I'm too black, I'm too loud, I'm too much, I'm not enough, okay? And these things come under cover of darkness and try to wedge their way in and get a foothold in your soul. And the way it works is that they're quiet at first, right? They lay down and they pretend to be friendly and they pretend to be dormant. But if we don't deal with them, then they become big issues later. I'd like to imagine that if JL hadn't dealt as she had with Cicero, and again, not flesh and blood, but she took a tent peg. That woman took a tent peg and a hammer to that man's head, okay? If we don't nail down the things that have bad intent for us, for our lives, they will kill us slowly from the inside out. You know how drowning happens? Drowning is not loud and, you know, it's not, ah, help! It's none of that. 
Drowning happens when you are in too deep. Maybe you get tired or you get pulled out. But it's very quiet. I had an experience where a friend of the boys, we were out one time, and we were at the pool, and he came to me, and I was, I was there the whole time. He came to me and said, oh, man, I did tell. I was struggling. I was struggling. Drowning? Because what happens, too, is that when those thoughts come in, those negative thoughts, those suicidal thoughts, those hurtful thoughts, those traumatic experiences, when they get in, they tell us, shh, be quiet. Don't tell anybody. They won't understand. And what it really is is that they don't want to be exposed for what they are. And it's our responsibility to deal rough with them. We cannot allow them to stay. And maybe as you sit there, you're thinking about some of the things that maybe somebody told you about you. And it doesn't line up with what God says about you. God says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. God says that he made you with a purpose. God says that he made you, he thought about how he created you. He fashioned you and he formed you. He says you're smart, that you're intelligent, that you're brilliant, that he's, he, he has plans for you that are not harmful, but they will prosper you, give you a hope and a future, right? But sometimes there's another voice in your ears that's like, mm, 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 mm. yeah, right. Mm, 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 mm. You can never go farther than this. Mm, 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 mm. Your mother is this person. Mm, 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 mm. Your father is this person. Mm, 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 mm. You, you didn't um, go up a grade. You got hell back in school. Mm, 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 mm. You'll never accomplish. You'll never get any farther. That's a lie. That's a lie. And I'm not talking anything different from, you know, they, there are some of these help, self-help gurus and stuff like that. They talk about mind over matter. They talk about the importance of how you think. And they're right, but it's not a worldly principle. It's a biblical principle. Yes. 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 It's the truth of scripture. Okay? It's, a, it's the truth of scripture. Right? The, the heart in the Bible is associated with your thinking, with your thinking. That's why Jael put that tent peg not through his heart, not through his, the muscle that beats, because she could have done that. She put it through the man's brain. Yes. 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 Cicero means to meditate, to think, right? So these thoughts come in, these voices come in, and they cause you to think. They cause you to think different from what God says. Yeah, yeah. And you know what she did? She nailed those thoughts back to the ground from which they came. Because heaven says something different. God says something different. Your father, your creator, your maker says something different about you. And she had to deal valiantly and violently with that. And we are required to do the same thing. We also can understand that we are not in that fight on our, on our own. That God is fighting with us and fighting for us. He has given us his word as a sword. Yes. It cuts to the very division between soul and spirit. Yes. It tells us what is truth and what is not truth. Yes. It helps us to see and to discern. Not like how Jabin saw and discerned, but how he sees and how he discerns. Because he knows all things. He understands all things. He knows exactly how we're created. He knows exactly what's our future, what's our past. He works all things together for our good. And he will not abandon us. Amen. He will not leave us alone. And he will complete the work that he has begun. That's what the word says. Amen. But we have to open our eyes as well. We have to open our eyes and understand what is abnormal. See what is ab abnormal. And get passionate about it. Not just for ourselves, but for the people around us. I know you guys are family and maybe you're friends with each other and stuff like that. If you recognize a pattern in somebody else's life and all you can hear from them is negative and cup half, um, half empty and that kind of thing, you might want to say to them, hey, that's not true. I have a friend. My husband came and told me later, but I have a friend. And one time he said to me a while back, uh, we were talking about something or the other, and he said to me these words, But what's the best that could happen? 
And it opened my eyes. Because I used to think about what the worst was that could happen. And I didn't even realize that that was where my brain was at. Sometimes it takes us sh being shaken by truth to change our, th our thinking to change our understanding, to change our speech. Because the thing about the beliefs that we hold is that they become thoughts. And the thoughts that we have become words. And the thoughts that we, and the words that we have become actions, right? And words are so important. Because the Bible tells us that life and death is in the power of the tongue. That means what you say to yourself, what you say to other people, is so crucial. I hate to hear people talking about you, you monkey, you, you idiot, you, you this. Curses. Curses. How dare you? How dare you? Okay. You didn't make that person. You don't know what they're about. And you don't know what God's going to do in them. But you don't want to pull them down before they can even get a leg up. Let's not do that. Let's choose kindness. I know it's easy. It's fun, maybe, but it's not fruitful. All right. Jail was passionate. And maybe she was part of, maybe she was part of that ally situation where um, Heber, because Heber was a, a, a iron worker, right? Maybe they were doing, maybe they were making the chariots and maybe they were participating in the whole thing, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that you can't change your mind. Maybe you went and bought a vape. That doesn't mean you can't throw it away. You know, maybe you chose this shirt because it showed more stuff than your mother would want. But that doesn't mean you can't put a jacket over it. Okay. Maybe you decided that um, you can't pass this class. That doesn't mean that you can't go and ask your teacher, how can I make that up? Right? Maybe you're tempted to pick fruit off of somebody else's tree. That doesn't mean... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> right. Mango season. Oh. oh. Okay. So there's a war on the inside. When we used to go to a conference called One Thing, uh, this lady main, named Misty Edwards used to sing, There's a war on the inside. It's the arena to dedicate my love for you. There's a war on the inside. It's the arena to dedicate my love for you. We always have a choice before us, right? Which are we going to serve? Are we going to serve God? Yes, ma'am. You have a question? There's one right there. Right there. There is a choice set before us. Are we going to choose to serve God? That one. Yes, ma'am. The things of God, or are we going to choose to think to serve the things that will eventually bring destruction? And the things of God is nothing big and high tech. God is so involved in the smallest things of our lives. The breath that you breathe. He fills you. He made you. He knows you. He understands you. Better than your best friend. Better than your spouse if you have one. He's better. Okay? So we have to deal with what lies dormant. Throw out the photo of your ex that you peek at ever so often when you and the current boo ain't doing so good. All right? Throw out the Throw out the um, pills that you keep for a rainy day. The muscle relaxers that make you feel good. Throw them out. Deal with what lies dormant before it has a chance to get back up and cut your throat. Is what I'm saying. We have to take advantage of every opportunity and leave nothing to chance. We can't keep sticking our toes in the water and pulling them back. And sticking our toes in the water. Something might bite your toe. Something might bite your toe. Okay. Um, we have to plant our foot on the necks of the things that, that desire our worst and don't have our best at heart. And it starts on the insides of our brain. There's a verse in the Bible that says, snatch every thought. 
and take it captive to obedience. Snatch every thought. Everybody do this for me. Look, snatch it. Snatch it. That's literally what it's like. I know you're smiling, but that's literally what it's like. Sometimes I be driving along and the thoughts that I have be wild, boo. Wild. And I'm like, what? What was that? But I don't just snatch it and leave it there. And I don't, well, actually sometimes I do do that. But it's, it is symbolic of this is what I'm hearing. This is what I'm thinking. But this is what God's word actually says about me, about this situation, about this other person. Okay? This is a man I've been married to for 17 years. Oh, bless the Lord. My thoughts about him aren't always great. And possibly likewise. Okay? My thoughts about myself aren't always great. Get it in the morning and see some gray hairs and like, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then I have to snatch that thought and remember, realize that I'm aging gracefully and Amen. that God loves me as I am and see and that the inside of me is more important than the outside and, and all this stuff. We have to be dedicated to exposing what lurks within and refuse to participate in the lie because the enemy or the enemy of our soul is so good at hiding under the cover of darkness. Right? So if you're feeling like if you're not good enough or you're feeling like if, you know, you may want to hurt yourself, cut yourself, there's so many things. Find somebody who you can trust and talk to them about it. Talk to God about it. Because, you know, at 3.30 in the morning when somebody else might be sleeping, he's there. He's listening. Do y'all believe he's always listening to you? Because he is. And not only is he always listening, he talks back. Believe it or not. And, you know, my husband said at the very beginning, my sheep hear my voice. We can hear him. We can't believe the lie that God is so far away from us and so distant from us that we can't interact with him. He made us to interact with him. And most of all, we have to protect the tent that God has given to us. We have to trash our idols. There's a, um, there's a verse before, uh, sorry, there's a chapter before we get into Joshua 11, Joshua 9, where the Israelites almost lost everything because this one dude named Achan was told with everybody else not to steal or take any of the spoil from the battle. And he was so greedy that he saw this nice looking fit and he saw this, these gold, this, this gold and this silver and all this kind of stuff. And when nobody was looking, he tucked it into his tent. Can somebody say, there is earth beneath my tent? What does that mean? That means that there are places in our hearts that still need healing. There are places in our hearts that still want the things that aren't right for us. There are places in our hearts that go after the things that we desire. We're human. We have desires. We want things, right? But everything we want isn't for our best. All right, so we have to trash those idols because you know what happened? He, he chose a lesser thing when he could have gotten so much more, right? Sometimes we go after what we think looks good. We go after what we think is going to gonna please us and that we're gonna enjoy and we suffer the consequences when if we had waited the chapter over we would have gotten all the booty and all the bounty from the next battle because it was allowed to us we just had to wait we just have to wait and especially you know in this age when everything is so fast and so quick and so microwavable and you go to starbucks and you get starbucks takes long you go to popeyes and you get chicken quick you know, it's hard sometimes to wait on the good home cooked food that will do our bodies better. So, 
finally, I want us to just think about Jael's choice of weapon. The tent peg and the mallet. The tent peg is what? It's the thing that secures the tent. It's the thing that holds the tent down. Okay? And the mallet is what we use to drive the tent peg into the ground to hold the tent. And for me, we all it always comes back to this. It's the word of God, which is in your Bibles, and prayer. The word of God secures our soul. The word of God helps us understand who God is and who we are. The word of God gives us wisdom for life. If you think about John Maxwell, I don't know if you know John Maxwell, but quite a lot of these, um, as I said, these self-help and, and, and living um, teachers and so on, their principles are found in the word of God just packaged for today or packaged in a way that is easily accessible. The word of God holds us together, holds our tents together. And the thing that drives it home into our hearts is prayer. And prayer is what? Talking to God and him talking to us, which feels weird sometimes. It feels weird for me too. I'm a pastor and it still feels weird for me sometimes. But the benefit is that as you do it more, it becomes more and more natural. And you start to hear him more. You start to recognize him more. You start to see things open up for you that you didn't expect. And you start to hear his voice. And you start to, it just gets interesting. It gets cool. All right? Prayer and the word of God. The Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it springs the issues of life. Jael was not just skillful. Sorry, she was not just willful. She was skillful. At the conference we were at, the gentleman talked about skill being the application of knowledge without having to have a point of reference. You're so practiced in it that you don't need to read the manual, right? The way she grabbed that tent peg and that mallet and hit that man through the head, it's like she knew what she was doing, okay? But we also know that we have the accompaniment, the help of the Lord. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence, and his children will have a place of refuge. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. What does that mean? That this is my tent, and he makes a tent around me. When I trust him, when I ask him to be part of my life, when I ask him to help me out, be with me, he surrounds, he surrounds us, not just me but all of us. And that allows us to enlarge the place of our tent, to get out the stuff that will bring detriment and bring trouble and give us a way forward into future blessing. So that's all I have for you today. I want you to just stand with me. Um, Sarah, if you would just play that song. It's called, I Speak Jesus. And I just want to just take a few moments to declare the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Over every heart and every mind. Because the warfare is real. I'm able to stand and talk to you today after coming out of warfare of my own. I love the idea of speaking. I love the idea of teaching and preaching. I do not love the practice of it. it it's very difficult for me. I prefer to write. Okay, and a few weeks ago, I preached. Now, your husband, not your husband, not your husband, my <laughs> husband will tell you that before I even left church, I was like, Dwayne, you cannot show that. That went terribly. It was, it was, I was so distracted and it, went, it was horrible. And, and don't show it, don't do it. Okay, I chose to believe a lie. A little, a little scissor snuck into my tent and said, That was the worst you've ever done. Don't ever try it again. You're not fit for it. You're not called to it. You can't do it. You shouldn't do it. All right? But then we kicked Cesara out. We, we, we put a, a tent peg through Cesara's head. And we got up and we went again. All right? Or I did. And hopefully you will too. So here in your presence, Lord, I just want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you, Lord God, 
that the entrance of your word brings light. It brings light to the dark areas of our hearts, Lord God. It brings light to the dark areas of our thinking, Father. The places that are private. God, you know the thoughts of everyone here. I do not know them. You know them. You know the places that they need shoring up. You know the places that need encouragement, Father. You know the places that they need a reminder of your love. You, you know the places where they need a father, where they need a help, where they need a strength, where they need uh, uh, um, whatever it is. God, you know it. And I declare the name of Jesus over everyone here. I bind and I bind tear down every stronghold that has been set up against the knowledge of you in their lives i pull down every um every stronghold of fear every stronghold of insecurity every stronghold of, of discouragement every stronghold of sadness everything that has snuck in through the gate of trauma in jesus name i tear down low expectations in jesus name i tear down pride in jesus name i thank you lord god that you are above all and I thank you that as you speak to your children, from the youngest to the oldest of the children in here, Lord, I thank you that in days to come, God, that they will have an appetite, not for the things that discourage and the things that tear down, but for the things that give them life. I pray that they will have a hunger on the inside, an appetite for your word, that they will start to get curious about what you say about them. Lord God, and I pray that you would make the way very clear. Make the, the path very clear, Lord God. For them to see you and experience you. I thank you, Lord God, for supernatural experiences. I thank you for dreams and for visions, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that they will get up on their bed and think, well, what in the world was that? And as they ask you about it, that they will hear your voice explaining, God, that you have purpose for their lives, that you have destiny for their lives. Lord God, that you are, you are the current that keeps them going in Jesus' name. I thank you for them here today. I thank you for them here today. You brought them. You brought them. And we declare that from today, they will never be the same from the youngest to the oldest. I thank you for this unit. I thank you for making them tightly knit as a family. I thank you, Lord God, that nothing shall shake them. Nothing shall touch them. I speak to their health in Jesus' name. Each and every one of them, from the crowns of their heads to the soles of their feet, I declare that they are whole, Lord God, that they are united, Lord, that they are unshakable, that they are a team, Lord God, that they are a family that loves you and that serves you, Lord God, and that you will put your face before them for favor, God, and you will, you will set a path before them, Lord God, that they will never be shaken and never be moved, Jesus. I thank you that your plans concerning them are good. And I thank you even for the others who are usually here, Lord, for, for the boys, Lord God, for, for Dwayne, for, for um, Monica, the Samuels, Lord, for Sister Z. I thank you, Lord God, for all the ones who aren't here. I thank you, Father, that your love is extended to us. I pray, God, that as we go from here, because you're so personal, that something will come back that will be life-giving. That will be life-giving. I don't know. Is there anybody who feels specifically like they would want to be prayed for in this moment? I pray generally that there's anybody who actually wants a specific time of prayer. You can raise your hand now. Anybody? Just a second. I just felt like, just to hear, baby, that again... You know, sometimes we go through life. My, life. my wife was talking about, you know, the lady and the guy that came in the tent. Tent is her. Y'all remember the tent is supposed to be her heart, right? Her hearts, right? And sometimes things come in that are the enemy. And meaning that they're working against us. They want to uh, uh, um, uh, deceive us. And, you know, sometimes thoughts that are hurtful come in, especially when we get disappointed. Yeah, when things don't work out according to our expectation. Have you ever been disappointed in your life? Like something that you wanted to happen didn't happen? And sometimes in that moment, it's when, you know, those thoughts, you know, come in. You know what? I never deserved it anyway. You know what? I'm not good enough for this. And, you know, you can deal with so many things just coming in your mind. And I want you to understand that God often in the midst of our disappointments, still has... Sarah, can you turn that down just a bit? Sarah, yeah, just turn it down. He still has an appointment for us, right? A disappointment doesn't mean that God has forgotten or God doesn't have a moment prepared for your benefit and for your blessing, 
Okay, guys? Yeah? You can turn it down some more around. Or down the, if you can, from there. I want to share something quickly with you that just happened just two weeks ago. And then we're going to pray because I think that, you know, and I feel it in my heart. I mean, maybe we can pray for everyone. Um, you know, again, that whatever thoughts might have come in through the door of disappointment, that those things would be flushed out of our minds and we'd be open to be excited about the appointments that God has for us, that we won't be in a place where it's like, you know what, I am not going to put my expectation out there because the times that I have done that, it didn't work out and God, I'm not going to do it. Well, let me share with you a story. Just two weeks ago, as I told you, we were going to LA. Anybody ever been over to California? Wants to go California? Um, yeah, it's nice. The weather is nice. The weather is really nice. <laughs> but I went over there and you know what? Did some business, did some things. But on the last night, I realized there was a Lakers versus Warriors game. Yeah? Anybody watch NBA basketball? Basketball? Lakers versus Warriors, okay? Now, my team is the Miami Heat, by the way, so don't stone me. All right? Full Miami Heat here, but who, who doesn't want to see Steph and LeBron play against each other, right? And so I pulled open the app. I said, man, I'm going to be in L.A. Let me just open up the app. I opened up Ticketmaster, okay? And I saw there were just a few seats left, but they were all in like the 300s, right? And if you know L.A. and San Francisco, those are two of the most expensive teams to go and watch. Anyhow, I looked at it and I saw, oh, there was a seat way up in 320-something. You know, that's up in the bleeds. And it was like $120. And I was like, okay. Well, I've never been to a game before, and this is my opportunity. I'm going to pay for it. So I'm going to pay for it. And you know what happens? Bank of America shows up this message. Something happened with this transaction. They didn't say declined. They said something happened with this transaction, and you need to check on us and so forth. So I'm like, my goodness. So I go over. I go in the app, Bank of America. I go in the live chat, right? And I began to talk with the, the, the person on the other end. And they said, well, we can't see why anything would have happened. We don't see anything on our end. Our end. Go and try again. So I opened the app now, going back to try again. And I open it, going to look for the seat. And guess what? The seat is gone. Everything is gone. It's fully sold out. And I'm like, Bank of America! I hate you. Not really, but, I, you know. But that's how I felt in the moment. Like, what happened? I missed my opportunity. Anyway, as I was, you know, uh, just walking on, I remembered my barber had told me a few months back, you know, there's this app called Game Time that shows you some resales. I, 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 I saw you, I saw you, I saw you, sister. I saw you, like Game Time. He should have used Game Time in the first place. I saw you. But I, I pulled up Game Time. And I go into Game Time, and I see there's, again, some seats there. There are re resale seats, right? The people that had tickets don't want to go anymore. They want to resell. And so there's this seat only available in the celebrity box, right? The premium VIP box, right? Where, you know, they, they have their own bar and everything. It's like a premium, you know, people come serve you. It's in that area, it's like where TNT sets up when they do their news broadcast in ESPN. And these seats, you know, I look at the normal price. This is like $470. That's a car payment, all right? I'm like, no way. <laughs> there is no way, absolutely no way. But because I hit it for some reason, I got a ping and a reseller sent a notification that they have a ticket for sale for that seat. Do you know how much they told me they wanted to just let it off for? 80 bucks. 80 bucks, guys. 80 bucks. Listen, I didn't play with that. In fact, I didn't even use Bank of America again yesterday, man. I pulled out Capital One, and I said Capital One worked for me. And I got my ticket, guys. And I went and I enjoyed that game Friday night, October the 13th. Yeah, Friday the 13th. I enjoyed that game. That was a good game. Steph was hitting about 50 in his warm-up threes from the half-court line. Had everybody like, woo, you know? That's what he does when he gets warmed up. And LeBron came out. But it was an amazing experience. Now, if it had worked the way I wanted it to work, when I first tried, you know, when I got in there, I was in the VIP session, I looked all up, I said, wow, the bleeds are pretty high, you know? But I'd still be grateful even if I'd made it in there. But look what God has done. I wanted that, but God said, uh-uh. It looked like a disappointment, but God still had my appointment set up. So this is what I want to pray for. 
Because my wife is talking about, you know, nailing those thoughts, right? Not, not going to nail anybody, but you, you're nailing those thoughts that try to get in your heart, right? Because sometimes when you're disappointed, you can think, nah, not me. That person, but never me. I want you to know, yes, you. It may not have happened according to your expectation, but God has already prepared the way. My wife, she didn't go too much into it, but she tried to apply four times for that scholarship. Scholarships, none of them came through until that one just came out of the blue. I remember that I was, I was boyfriend then. I was trying to get up in, yeah. Focused, but boyfriend. But I remember being there with her through that story. And I remember telling her, just go again, just go again. And it's on that last time, out of the blue, this company just appears. And I'm like, go on. And then they had her all in the newspaper when she wanted and everything. But four times denied. I'm telling you, when God makes a promise to you, when God puts confidence in your heart, it doesn't matter if the first door closes, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. Just keep believing. Keep the right thoughts up here. Win the war within. By keeping the right thoughts up here. You got me? Don't let anybody tell you it can't work for you. Yeah? I had folk I went to school with told me, no, you could never be that. I told them I wanted to be this. No, no, not you. And if I had let that sink in, and if I had believed them, I wouldn't be who I was. I'm, I am today. Listen, let me just pray for all you guys. Can you want to pray? Amen. Just again, if you can just open your hands to God. That's just a sign to say, God, I'm just open for you to just bless me. Lord, I thank you for every heart in this room today. God, I thank you, God. Father, that some of them, Lord, in fact, all of us, we have walked through some measure of disappointment already, God. And Lord, I thank you that, God, because of those disappointments, sometimes, yes, the wrong thoughts come in, but today we are making a decision, again, to evict, to kick out every wrong thought out of our minds and out of our hearts. God, we receive your word. My wife said it earlier that your plans are to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us a future and a hope. And so, Father, we speak hope to every heart right now in this room. I speak hope to your heart. I want you to know that God still has an appointment for you. I want you to know God still has the best for you. There's somebody in this room, and again, you're in a position where you're renting, and you've always wanted to be a homeowner, but there have been some circumstances that showed up that took resources out of your hand, and you said, my goodness, I saved up, and look, this happened, and now, again, the opportunity is gone, and it seems like it's been a setback, but I want you to know our God is the master of the company back a man because you had a setback it doesn't mean that you can't come back and I speak over your life today that again the promises of God towards you shall be fulfilled I don't know who that is again if you've been renting again but again the Lord says you are going to be owning I just want you to put your hands and just stretch them a little further father I thank you even online I thank you God for those who have felt that they've wasted their resources who have felt like something showed up sometimes it's a health issue sometimes it's an accident again it's a vehicle issue something happens and something happened and it felt like your resources were just drawn out of your hands it's like putting money in your pocket but the pocket has in holes it just went right out but Lord I thank you today you are the restorer and you're able to supply Lord you're able to provide and so father I thank you in the name of Jesus that your favor is upon your people and that they will see your favor in the land of the living, which means it's going to happen in your lifetime. Because I want you to say, it will happen in my lifetime. It will happen, say it again, in my lifetime. One more time, it will happen in my lifetime. Father, I thank you. You're going to see the promises. And I speak over this family today hallelujah I thank God for all the families in the room but again I just speak over you again a future and a hope I speak over you that again the doors have not been closed to you again if even if they were it's because God closed them because he has something better I speak to your hope and I say to your expectation rise again to your hope rise again amen amen hallelujah and I just want to prophesy over you, uh, Prince, is it? Prince. Um, I hear the Lord say, Prince, as I look at you, I see King Solomon. King Solomon, 
who was a prince, but as a king, he was known for something specific and separate from his father. I declare and I see that the wisdom of God is on you. I declare declare and I see that there's an attractiveness about you that will draw the queen of Sheba, the queen of Sheba resources, prosperity, provision, supernatural outpouring into your life. That there are things about you, things that God has placed on the inside of you that will attract blessing, that will uh, attract resource, that will attract a uh, 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 benefit to you because God says I can trust you with it because he says God says to you that I can trust you with it and it's not going to be about what has gone before you or who has gone before you but there is something specific that I'm placing on the inside of you and I've placed on the inside of you a seed that I'm causing to come alive and spring up right now even as you sat there there were things that were going on in your mind there were changes that were happening in your brain there was there was a even as you listen to the word there was there was there were thoughts that were processing in your brain that were shifting a tide for you that would have taken you one direction but it's going to lead you instead into another another space and another place and I thank God today Lord I thank you today that God you are highlighting this son I thank you Lord God that you are lifting his head and you have called him your own I thank you Lord God that you are his father that he can trust your word concerning him that he can you can he can he can trust your voice concerning him that prosperity the prosperity of the nations shall flow to him because he will be a voice that speaks wisdom that knows how to handle disputes a judge even of sorts one who can who can um, make good decisions sound decisions who will be somebody who is trustworthy and who is somebody that uh, people can invest in and know that their 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 um, ROI is sure their return on that investment is sure so I just want to declare that over you and declare it over you son lift your head Amen. you are not cast down you are not forgotten yes. you are beloved of the father in Jesus name amen 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 praise God and let me tell you there's that creative entrepreneurial spirit on the inside of you in fact, you know, to step out of the box, right? I just see creativity and even technology and that entrepreneurial spirit, all right? And it's not going to wait until you get five years older. It's starting now. It's starting now. You know, sometimes we think we have to go through the traditional model of going and getting a degree and stuff and stuff. That can happen too, but there's an entrepreneurial on the inside of you, all right? Again, you're not just a businessman. You are a business. Yeah? And the Lord is going to express that in the midst of your heart. He's going to really give you levity and ideas, witty ideas in regards to the creative space and the technological space. I don't know what you do right now, what your hands do. Again, but that creative entrepreneur, it's on you. It's on you, bud. You do anything creative? Again? Yeah? So Say that again. Not not drawing, but I mean in the, the tech space. God is really going to begin to do some stuff there, right? Again, wa watch and see. He's going to, and, and the entrepreneur, you know, entrepreneur, starting your own business and getting out there, right? Right? Yeah, I have a friend called Tyler. He comes to my house, young guy, still going through, like, doing high school. But he comes, you know, and he has his own, like, landscaping business that he's pushed together. And, I mean, God is doing amazing things with Tyler, but I see you, not particularly landscaping, but I just see that creative entrepreneur, right? And God bringing tech together. So however that expresses itself, be confident, right? Go for it, all right? Um, sometimes it's like, you know, where's this going to lead? Sometimes it's, sometimes things feel like a hobby, right? You know, there's some folk, you know, they game for a hobby and then realize, my goodness, this can become a resource, all right? But I see that with you. And so just don't be afraid. It's going to come together. As my wife said, you know, that investment is going to come, okay? That investment is going to come. People see it, but again, people can't see it if you don't step out and do it, right? But they'll see it. It's on you, man. It's on you. It's on you. Multiple businesses, right? Amen. Praise God. Father, I want to thank you. Come on, we're just going to dismiss you here soon. But again, we never want to leave a session where we're together without giving you the opportunity, especially if you're here today, you never uh, have had a relationship with Jesus and you've never, again, chosen him as your Lord and Savior. What I mean by that, to, to choose his way of living, to become his disciple, 
It's more than just saying, you know, I'm a Christian. It's more than just that. Sometimes that title is just thrown around and anybody can say it, but it's another thing to live it. But, you know, I prefer to say becoming a disciple of Jesus. Just like he chose his disciples, he called them and they followed after him. And maybe that's you today. You're in a place where you feel like just as how he called them as he walked on the earth, he's calling you right now. He's saying, come, follow me. Come, follow me. Follow me. I'm telling you, when that happened for me, I was 16 years old. I was in the penthouse upper room of a club on a Saturday night with friends. And the Lord showed up and said, follow me. And I left that club, got in my car. I told my two friends who came with me, hey, I'm going home. If you want to come, because I dropped you here, you can come. If not, you can stay and find your way home, but I'm leaving. Yeah, because I had an encounter with the Lord. And what I want you to know, they got in the car with me. The following week, we were at a church service. We gave our hearts to the Lord, and that was it for us. We are all going in one direction since then. And you know what I told the Lord? I said, God, if you are not better than the club, then I'll probably come back to the club. But I want you to know I'm 41 years old. I know I don't look it. I look like 25. <laughs> but I'm 41 years old. And you do the math, right? Since then, 16, I haven't turned back. I haven't went back. Yeah? It doesn't mean everything was rosy and easy. There are struggles along the way, yes. But Jesus has always been faithful. And if you're here today and you want to say, Jesus, I want to be a disciple of you. I want to follow you. I want to give my heart to you. I just want you to lift your hand in the room. You can stay right where you are. But if that's you, with all eyes closed, amen, just lift your hand. Praise God. I see your hands. I see your hands. Just, you know, don't worry about it. You just, you just lock in there with him. Just keep your hands up, amen. Praise God. Praise God. And I want to pray for you right now. Lord, we thank you for these hearts. Just keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Let him see it. Amen. Oh, praise God. Lord, I want to pray for these hearts right now. Those who have lifted their hands in a response to say, Jesus, come into my heart. Lord, you see them. Lord, you know them better than I know them. And the wonderful thing is you created them. But you hear their yesterday. You hear their hearts saying, Jesus, I want to be your disciple. So, Lord, I ask that you would come right now into their lives. I ask right now, Lord, that you would forgive them of their sins, that you would wash them and make them clean. God, we know that it is only through you that we can come to the Father. And so, Jesus, I thank you, amen, for being that door for them, for being the way, the truth, and the life for them. I thank you for reigning and ruling in their hearts. I thank you for filling them with your spirit, that, God, they would follow you all the days of their life, God, and that they would grow again to know you and to live for you. Lord, I bless them now, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, everybody, just pray this prayer with me. Father God, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. I receive him in my heart. I thank you that he makes a way where there is no way. And I will follow after his way by his power working in me. I will live with my all for thee. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you all. God bless you all. Hey, I love it. I love it. God bless you. All right. Amen. And you know what we love to say? Hug and love on a few people. I know, oh, yes, there is giving as well. We have ways to give digitally online. If you can put up the screen, amen. And you can feel free to give as the Lord leads you. Amen. We don't give under compulsion, but it's out of your own heart. So, again, these are the ways to give here. There is a website. There's text to give. And also there is a QR code on the visitor's card. Amen. But God bless you. Amen. Come on. And even as you go today, come on, love on some folk, hug some folk. As we love to say, make sure that if you've gotten a visitor's card, make sure that, again, you wrote your name and your email on it so we can keep in touch with you. And if you have any other prayer needs, we also have a section there. I pray over these every week. They're right on my desk. I put my hands on them and I lift you before the Lord. All right. I want you to know that. Okay. And again, 
If you've made a decision for Jesus, I want you to know that we have free resources for you. We have a devotional for you, and we have a Bible that we like to send to you, okay? And so if you can let us know, um, I know we have the cards there, um, but tell if you can help me here. Again, just those that made that decision today, again, to give your heart, right? Let's know, again, uh, your contact, if my wife can just get that, please. And then we can give you those free resources, okay? Um, if you're a teenager, we got Bibles that are more suited towards you. And again, if you're an older adult, you know, we have resources like that to study material that will help you, okay? And we are always a community that welcomes you. The door is always open. Amen? All right. May God bless you and keep you. Love you guys. And thanks for seeing you again today. All right. Hug a few people again before you go.